When it comes to the video game industry, there are a lot of rivalries. Are you a Nintendo guy or a Sony guy? A Castlevania guy or a Metroid guy? A Crash guy or wrong? But none of these rivalries even come close to Mario vs. Sonic. What makes it so interesting to me is how similar the franchises really are. Not only did they both start as 2D platformers and eventually transition to 3D in the late 90s, both have iconic characters and worlds, phenomenal music, and have cemented their place in the hearts of millions. Yet, it is so night and day how Mario is treated with the utmost respect and dignity, almost never even putting out a subpar game. Meanwhile, Sonic has just been dragged through the dirt for like 15 years. And nowhere was this more exemplified than back in 2017, when less than two weeks after Plumber Boy returned to one of his most beloved gameplay styles with Super Mario Odyssey, Sonic fans were greeted by Sonic Forces, another in the long line of Sonic games that, get this, weren't received too well. It becomes clearer and clearer with each game that 3D Sonic just doesn't work. At least, that's how the general public sees things. To tell you the truth, I have, for whatever reason, played almost none of the 3D Sonic games. I've put some time into Lost World and Generations, but Sonic Heroes is the only one I've ever actually finished, and that was ages ago. So now's the time to change all that. It's time to go through Sonic's 3D history and see how good or bad these games really are. Starting with the game of the hour, Sonic Forces. We open with Eggman ranting about his newest evil scheme and how it's totally gonna work this time, I'm shocked. He corners Sonic in a city nearby Green Hill, and due to the combined powers of Shadow, Zavok, Chaos, Metal Sonic, and a mysterious new guy, Sonic is killed. Man, people were not lying, this game was short. So what did I think of Sonic Forces? Overall, I would say this bit's going on a little too long. Alright, so he's a blue hedgehog who runs fast, I know exactly what this plot needs. War. Since Sonic is apparently the only one of our heroes that can do jack shit, Eggman's army has taken over 99.99% .99 of the world in his absence. Forget the fact that we have creatures with devastating physical capabilities, a ninja who can turn invisible, walk on walls, and teleport, and someone who can time travel? Nah, we don't have Sonic, so I guess we're screwed. Luckily for the resistance, the hero they need but don't deserve is about to arrive. Slash the Eagle. This is undoubtedly the thing Sonic Forces is known most for, the custom character. Fan-made Sonic characters are quite easily the most common creation of any fan base that has ever existed, so capitalizing on that here was downright genius. The creation tool itself is alright, it could certainly be more in depth, but considering it's a Sonic character, I don't see much to complain about. You've got seven species to choose from with a metric ass load of color, clothing, and weapon options. Like I said, I ended up making my boy Slash a nice dapper teal bird. For the first couple levels he was grey, but eventually I realized that the teal was way better. Apparently though, being a bird defies expectations by having sets of horrifying monster teeth inside your beak. Regardless, Slash is here to save the day, and his first big mission is to recover Sonic's corpse from the Death Egg. This is probably the Sonic game outside of 06 where the plot matters most, but it's still the same repetitive, you can mash the A button and you'll still know what's going on, that we all expect. When you get inside the giant copyright infringement, alright, your non-refundable order is in, we'll ship that headstone to you in three to four days, have a good day, sir. It's revealed that Sonic is still alive. Ah. Due to you tearing the place up, Sonic's freed from his restraints and I'll have to get through Zavok to escape, and... Uh, Alright, I just have to ask, who the f*** likes Zavok? Lost World is the most bland, white bread of a game I have ever played, and yet they just keep bringing him back. Who the hell keeps asking for Zavok? I want names. Anyway, you kill him and his carcass disappears, but Sonic is like, well, whatever, I gotta go, and meets up with you so you can help him escape. Meanwhile, Tails gets ambushed by Chaos while trying to fix up Omega, but is saved in the nick of time by Sonic. But it's not the Sonic we know, it's classic Sonic from Mania and Generations. So you may now be asking, for what reason other than cheap fan service would they possibly bring him back? So now we've got our three characters, and to be honest, there is just not enough differentiating them. Classic Sonic is only 2D segments, meanwhile modern Sonic and the custom character switch back and forth between 2D and 3D. And the only difference between those is that the custom character uses weapons and Sonic can boost. It also doesn't help that Classic Sonic's levels are worse designed than in Mania and Generations, and are probably the worst in the game overall. I'm so glad he's here. With Sonic saved and Classic Sonic joining your cause, the rest of the game is a non-stop sequence of taking back areas of the world that were previously conquered by 
by Eggman, all the while taking on the iconic characters he's turned against you. Except for Chaos, who never has any plot relevance because this game was rushed. I mean, because Classic Sonic defeated him, of course. If they wanted this game to look and feel like it's taking place in the middle of a war, they really could have done a lot more to make the levels not just feel like standard Sonic fare. Aside from the copious amounts of enemies and some torn up buildings and such here and there, it hardly feels like anything abnormal is even going on. If I were in charge, I think I would have just made everything nightmarishly chaotic. As in, maybe you're running along as usual, but then one of Robotnik's robots comes down from the sky and just sends debris and landscape flying, so you're jumping all over the place, running on upside down airborne street chunks. At least that way it would be a bit more fitting for a war. After a brief encounter with a giant snake in Mystic Jungle, the mysterious character from earlier reveals himself to be a masked jackal named Infinite created by Eggman alongside the power of the Phantom Ruby. He may be the epitome of Edgy the Hedgy, but I can't lie and say I don't like this guy. He's, much like the rest of this game, hilariously overdramatic, and his powers are honestly pretty sweet. It's kinda like a Marvel Scarecrow thing, where touching these red cubies screws with your mind and bends reality, and my biggest problem with this game is that they didn't do more with him. I mean, for God's sake, he took up a pretty big chunk of the box art and marketing, you'd think he'd be more than just another Eggman crony. But then again, Metal Sonic is here, and he's technically not even in this game, so I guess that doesn't mean much. But wait a minute, I mentioned him earlier, so what do I mean when I say he's not actually in the game? As it turns out, these four are all hollow replicas created by the Phantom Ruby, and Shadow is the only one who actually makes an appearance. Sonic even makes a joke in the game about how little sense it makes to create a special replica of Metal when you could just build more, and that joke is a pretty perfect segue into talking about the writing of this game, and how much they just don't care anymore. Obviously these characters crack jokes, I have no problem with that at all, but they've become so self-aware of the fact that the stories are absurd and make no sense that they just roll with it. Sometimes it feels like a B-movie. There's literally a scene where Tails remotely hacks into Eggman's computer and just finds out everything they need to know, implying that Eggman has like a folder on his PC labeled evil plan that they can just look at. On one hand, that's hilarious and I don't mind it because the series has consistently failed to be serious, but on the other hand, if you're gonna go down this route, I wouldn't make the story about war? Once you've defeated Infinite a couple times, he starts to have some issues with the Ruby before seemingly being pulled away by some unknown force and never seen again, so he's coming back for a sequel. But since he's gone, that means it's just us and Eggman. Ugh. Don't get me wrong, I love the guy. But Infinite would have been such a cooler final boss than Eggman Robot number 346. Imagine how sick it would have been if your double boost cracked the ruby and it just started spewing out tons of energy with all sorts of real and fake stuff all over the place. I mean, when you think about it, the ruby is really the problem in these two games, so having the final fight basically be against it would have made a lot of sense. Either way, the three heroes that matter work together and take Eggy down, leading to one very awkward cutscene about how they need to fix the world after the damage he's dealt. Roll credits. Now is the time to reiterate. This game is very short. It took me barely over three hours to finish, even when doing the side stuff, so if you're looking for a more substantial experience, this isn't it. Personally, I don't care how long a game is as long as I have fun, but did I have fun? Man, I don't know. Sure. This game doesn't even slightly deserve the amount of hate it gets, but it doesn't really deserve praise either. Its bad aspects aren't really that egregious, but its good aspects aren't really that impressive. I was planning on saying that it was easily the most functional Sonic game I've ever played, but then this happened, so I guess that's out the window. Someday, I will find a Sonic game that doesn't violently break on me, but today was not that day. If you're looking for something to quickly run through with your brain shut off and see some enjoyable spectacle, it might work for you. As for me, if I wanted to run through something short, I'd probably just play Mega Man. But hold on to your asses, because I've got the fresh scoop on the next game in the franchise. Tell us, what's it gonna be like? It's gonna be a prequel, giving the backstory of Zava. Who the-